Hello, welcome again to Ken Fashion Journey. Today we'll be talking about my buying my first blazer. As from previous episodes, from episode 2, I have spoken and I have shared with you my experience of buying my first shirt on episode 2. And then on episode 3, I have spoke about buying my first pair of khaki pants. And on episode 4, I have spoke about selecting the right pair of shoe, which is the penny loafer. So right now in our continue, in my continuing journey of building an Ivy League wardrobe for my college days, the next item is that I'm talking about the navy blazer. And when you talk about the navy blazer, it is always a difficult choice because due to budget constraint, I don't have a lot of money to spare. So what I could afford is that my budget is below 200 US dollar to buy a good blazer whereby it will last me through the years. So of course my first blazer, which is my personal choice, was a many little Xenia double-breasted blazer because I saw so much power of the advertisement by Xenia whereby he always said, your blazer got to be double-breasted and it has to be a many little Xenia. Wow, it was beautiful. But somehow, due to budget constraint, I have to relook and re-evaluate. Re so my coming down, my next choice would be a Brooks Brother blazer. Even the Brooks Brother blazer is, seems far-fetched out for me because Brooks Brother blazer is relatively famous. It is at 295 US dollar back in 1986. Again, besides Brooks Brother, I have another choice, which is J.E. Press. J.E. Press, to me, is always a higher level than Brooks Brother. That's why it is priced about at least 20 to 30% above Brooks Brother, whereby we are talking about 350 US dollar. And last but not least, there's always the choice of Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren, during the time back in 86, is a very sexy brand. It is the brand for all college guys, because if you are seen in Ralph Lauren, you are the man and you are the happening person. Somehow, due to budget constraint, that wouldn't really stop me. I had to do my research and bingo, I found my blazer whereby I'm so happy and until today, I'm still very proud of it. Here, I found this company which manufacture great blazers and their name is Corbin, which is this blazer whereby I'm talking about. So what is Corbin? Corbin Limited was started by the Russian immigrant Nathan Corbin, who emigrated to U USA and they stepped foot on St Staten Island together with his two sons, Lee and Howard Corbin. And the father and son's team, they started a manufacturing plant just to manufacture on trousers in Brooklyn. And they have been there since from 1946 to 1957. And at the end of 1957, the Corbin family, they had to say goodbye to Brooklyn and they had to move inland to Huntington. The reason being is that due to a lot of labor issues that they are experiencing in Brooklyn, it's not feasible anymore. So they moved inland to Huntington, Virginia. So in Huntington, Virginia, they started the Corbin manufacturing plant just focusing on trousers with 40 workforce. And as business grew, their, their life improved and business also grew bigger and they had to augment their product line. So they started manufacturing blazers and also for suits. And I would like to share with you, like this is my Corbin blazer whereby I bought from John W. Cole, whereby he is the finest gentleman store in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And this is the blazer, the classic navy look blazer whereby it is in the Ivy League style. It is the sack blazer. The sack blazer, that means actually the blazer got no suit, got no shape. So your body got to shape the blazer. Just like this manicure, if the body will shape the blazer and you will give it shape. And secondly, it comes in a classic navy flan flannel. And I like to invite you now to come over for a closer look on the classic Ivy League blazer. It comes in a uh, three row on two button 
and then also it comes with patch breast pocket and patch pockets over here with flat and I'm so happy and to and proud to show you that it is the Corbin blazer and it is from John W. Cole and they are kind enough to monogram it for me with the monogram, the initial KK, which is Ken Kwan. And also since we are here, this is also my first Brooks Brother tie. Actually, I have quite sympathy. The tie actually is already frayed after years of wearing, but this is a classic color whereby it will never go wrong. It's Brooks Brother makers. And also another thing I'd like to share with you over here is that I like to mention my mentor again, Mr. Christian. He specifically ordered this crest for me, which is made in England with my initial K for Ken or for Kwan. And he ordered it for me via the catalog from this company called Cable Car Clothiers of San Francisco. Cable Car Clothiers of San Francisco is still doing extremely well right now today in San Francisco and is regarded one of the finest store in the world for the gentleman and it is a must visit when you are in San Francisco to check out the store. So what happened is that today what I'd like to share with you is some of the iconic items of the Ivy League wardrobe which is a very strong foundation for it. Namely, you start with the classic Oxford shirt, the khaki pants, the penny loafer and last but not least which is the classic navy flannel blazer. The classic navy flannel blazer in the Ivy League design will be in edge stitching over here, three row on two buttons, a sex suit design and of course at the back will be a center hook vent. And this is the so-called jacket whereby it's quoted by Mr. J Jacoby Press of J Press. He said that this is a to-do jacket for any occasion, a go anywhere occasion. But to me, I would like to say this is the backbone of any man's wardrobe, which is the navy blazer. Subsequently, right now is that a, uh, we have been through a couple of episodes. Actually, the foundation of my college wardrobe is already set and steady because I really got a strong foundation. So what is the next thing which you like, which I should recommend that you should like to add on for augmentation is a variety of shirts whereby I invite you to have a look, whereby you can check out the uh, uh, Eaton collar shirts and then different types of button down shirts. Again, we have more button down shirts over here and the ties, you can keep it simple with simple colors and not too loud and not too sharp because you just have to keep it subtle and also at the same time I would like to share with you with a minimal investment to keep your wardrobe sharp daily is that is to have a good choice of socks in rainbow colors because this will really add variety and add life to your wardrobe every time when you go be it like it's a day function it's an evening function you can play around with it because this is the things whereby it will stand out. Just like you can see, with a pair of black shoes, you can go for some royal color and a bangle color socks. And then also at the same time, you can have the purple socks and you can have the polka dot socks. So what happened is that this is the basic foundation of my wardrobe for college already. So in subsequent episodes, I'll be touching more on mix and match and also the different types of blazer whereby I bought along in my journey. The subsequent blazers whereby which I bought in my journey is that I bought the Xenia blazer, I bought the Hugo Boss blazer and I got the J Press blazer and last but not least back in 2003 I actually managed to buy my Brooks Brother blazer. Why after so many years? Because during that time between 1990s and the year 2002 is the dark days of American fashion whereby it is totally dominated by Italians and also the continental Europeans. So I will touch on that further in my subsequent uh, episodes. So what I would like to suggest is that should you like 
to check me out on my subsequent episodes, please press the subscribe button on the bottom right hand uh, side of your screen and I look forward to see you and I really would appreciate and delighted that you will join me in my subsequent episodes of Can Fashion Journey. Thank you and bye.